All right, let's talk about the always dominant Miles Garrett, the guy who definitely has, uh, you know, uh, he's a great player, right? One of the best, if not the best, edge rusher in football, and he had quite the performance against the Indianapolis Colts, potentially a game-winning performance against the Colts were uh, not even really potentially. I mean, they don't win this game without Miles Garrett. Let's talk about some of the plays he was able to make. Going to start off with one of the non-highlight real level plays. We will get into the highlight real level plays, don't worry. But it's an interesting play where I believe what's happening is this actually is a stunt where they're going to have the interior defensive lineman kind of run into the guard, try to get the guard to move towards the top of the screen. Miles Garrett then shifts around. Hopefully, he can get a straight shot to the quarterback. It's second and 10. The odds of a passing play seem pretty high, which is why the Colts aren't going to pass it here. Little bit of game theory. They're going to run the football instead. And as you see, you're going to, you know, Minshew's going to look to hand the ball off. Miles Garrett, I mean, a lot of guys are just, you know, their eyes are very wide oh my god, I can get past the guard, I can try to get towards the quarterback, but Garrett's reading this play really well, and that's just something that he does at such a high level, is understand what's going on. Watch him quickly go, doesn't even hesitate, gets over, gets to the halfback, able to make a play. Small little play, but these are these small little plays that kind of turn into big plays, right? And one of the arguments, you know, it's always, Miles Garrett and TJ Watt are always compared to each other, right? Because there is that, they play in the same division, there is the Brown-Steelers rivalry, and on top of it, it's like, who's the better edge rusher? Those are, in my opinion, pretty clearly the two best in football, and I don't think there's a massive gap between either of them. Traditionally, it's like Miles Garrett tends to win on more snaps. He tends to have kind of a higher win rate, but TJ Watt will make those more explosive splash plays, those turnover plays, things like that. That didn't happen this week, even though TJ Watt still did have turnovers. Miles Garrett had more, and watch what he's going to do on this next one. So going over here, he's going to be going up against uh, Bernard Rainman, who's a good uh, edge rusher for the Indianapolis Colts, or excuse me, good tackle for the Indianapolis Colts. It's a one-on-one -on -one block, so that's a bit tough, but you know, again, uh, he is a tackle who you trust. Right off the bat, watch how Garrett's going to kind of fake as though he's going towards the inside a little bit. Not a massive fake, but kind of, you know, goes, in, and I'm going to be honest, this feels like a basketball move. It really does, because watch this crossover. I mean, that's what it was. It was a crossover. He gets to the quarterback, knocks the football out. Uh, you know, Miles Garrett, I, I guess, wanted to be a, uh, a basketball player. The unfortunate thing is he's built like not just any edge rusher, but like a guy who was built in a lab to play edge rusher. So uh, he still uses some of those basketball moves with that incredible footwork. And that's just what makes him so unstoppable, right? Is like, there are players who are big and strong. I don't know how many players are as big and strong as Miles Garrett, but the guy's you know, 270 plus pounds, and he moves like a defensive back. It's, it's, it's incredible how shifty he is, and that's what makes him so special is it's that combination of his quickness, his speed, and his strength. This play was absurd. We're going to use this angle. It's the best angle to show it. The blocked punt, or excuse me, blocked field goal. There's no way that an edge rusher should be able to do this, especially an edge rusher that weighs 270 plus pounds, right? Like, okay, maybe like an off-ball linebacker, I, I suppose I can see it. The fact that there, you have a bigger edge rusher pulling off this kind of play, it's insane. Watch as you see, he's going to jump over the guard. You're allowed to jump over the guard. If you create contact, though, that is a penalty. So it's a risk to pull that kind of thing off. You have to make sure you get over there, not just, you know, high enough, but quick enough before, you know, an offensive lineman can kind of get up. He does that. He ends up blocking the field goal. Just an absurd play. Also, something like this, where what's going to happen is you're going to have the uh, tight end and the right tackle blocking Miles Garrett on this play. That's what's going to happen. That's the way this play is designed to work. As you see, tight end kind of gets in Garrett's way a little bit. Okay, fine. You know, not a lot of help there, but you're just, you're trying to get in his way a little bit. That's all you're trying to do here. This is now Blake Freeland, uh, who is the tackle for the Indianapolis Colts. So I, I thought it's shown some nice things, but this is a tough spot, even with help trying to block Miles Garrett. Watch how Garrett, I mean, that he made him look like a, like a turnstile. Like, I'm not even just saying that as an exaggeration. It legitimately looked like he went through a turnstile there and was able to get to uh, Gardner, uh, get to Gardner Minshew for the sack right there. Just an absurd 
play by Miles Garrett to pull that kind of thing off. And this is just the, the, the what he can do, right? He gets double teamed so frequently. All the time, there's extra help coming. And even with that, he can still make you look foolish out there. He got a, a strip sack touchdown on that play. I mean, that's just a huge play to pull off. Also, heading over here, this is a great play I want to talk about. Even though, like, it's not necessarily a highlight real level play or even that notable of a play, if we're being totally honest. Uh, in fact, this play is not going to involve Miles Garrett. It, it's not. He's not going to make a tackle. He's not going to impact the play whatsoever. It's not going to happen because it's a designed quarterback rollout towards the top of the screen. So if you're an offensive lineman here, really, you don't have to do much. You're going to block Miles Garrett a little bit, mostly to help sell the fake. So, okay, can't embarrass yourself on this play, right? You can't. You know, ball's going in the other direction. Doesn't matter what you do. Watch Miles Garrett just power him through. I mean, he moved up like two yards further back on the other side of the field. Uh, it was intercepted, so that's obviously not ideal. But it's just incredible stuff from Miles Garrett. And again, he can make these splash plays. Like, you know, we talk about the difference between TJ Watt and Miles Garrett. A lot of people, and myself included, feel like a lot of times those, you know, fumbles and stuff are a bit lucky, but also skill based, if you know what I mean. Like, there's obviously on a specific play, there's going to be other things that go into you being able to force a fumble, right? I mean, the quarterback holding on to the ball long enough for you to get there, the quarterback having the ball in a position where you can knock it out. All that stuff is. You know, there is luck involved in that. At the same time, the special players are the ones who, when they get those situations, when they're in that moment, they find a way to knock the football out. And that's what TJ Watt does. That's what Miles Garrett does. And it's certainly what he did in this one as he was able to really, I mean, just again, be a dominant force here for the Cleveland Browns. So yeah, it's a very interesting situation. Currently, if you look at the, uh, you know, the sack leaders, weirdly, Daniel Hunter is leading the league in sacks right now. He has played one more game than Watt and Garrett have played. It's also just one of those, uh, you know, weird things where his underlying numbers aren't that great. Hunter's aren't. He just happens to be leading the league. Uh, and then you have TJ Watt has eight and Miles Garrett has seven and a half. To me, those are going to be the two guys who are going to be challenging for the overall, uh, you know, defensive player of the year award and it makes sense to me those are the two best pass rushers in the league in my opinion there's a lot of good ones those are the two that are the they're in their own tier in my opinion and then you go to the next tier that's really how I view it if you want to know which player I think is better I've actually made a couple of videos on this channel offseason videos talking about you know comparing them between each other who I think is the better player but Given Miles Garrett, I feel like Garrett doesn't quite get the attention that TJ Watt does just because I feel like Cleveland doesn't quite get the attention that Pittsburgh does. Uh, but at the same time, wanted to give him some love. And he still gets plenty of attention because he's awesome. Uh, so yeah, those are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.